It's so nice to see these faces this early in the morning. How did your face look when you looked in the mirror this morning? I thought my neighbor was there, and it, was, it turned out to be me. <laughs> Dears family, what's the word Advent mean? Go ahead. Coming, yes, and you said that too. So we have it from the experienced people and our new people coming up. Yes, it means coming. When we reach a season like this, it's important that you and I as Christian Catholics are able to talk about our season because people will be wondering about what we do. And it's important for you to know that that's what it means. Now, this is the harder question. What is coming? What's that? All right, it is the birth of Jesus, but that's already a historical note. Okay? So there's more to this. What's the other part about the coming? Would you like me to tell you? You would? Are you sure? I want you. Are you sure? Am I? This is not a Protestant church, right? What's important here is to understand that this coming means that I recognize that Jesus did come into the world, but to what effect does that coming have on me in the here and the now? That's what we're after. So how does it affect me in the here and the now? Every year, the church in its wisdom goes over these special days to let you know that going through it just once is not enough that there are aspects to it, depending on your time and age, and there's more in the story than when we first heard it. I want you to think about this. Jesus was born, you know, some 2,000-plus years ago. Do you realize that lots of people very close to him did not know that he was even there? Think about that. Even among the the Jewish people, some of them never saw Jesus and he was right there next door. Think about that. There was no public TV and there was, you know, news by word of mouth, which works. But there are so many people who did not see who he was or even run into him, even though that's a small country. Think about that. So what this season is that we were not there for that. So there are things that we need to be watchful about. And the watchful about is to understand the story and to understand that that story is meant for us and to be a part of our lives. So the word that they use in this scripture is watch. The new word used is called (laughs) mindfulness. Are you aware of that word, mindfulness? And so the challenge of this, the first week of Advent, is to be mindful of the ways in which you experience the Lord in your everyday life. That's what we're after. It's that clear, that simple. And in doing so, we can grow deeper in our understanding of this God who came for only one reason. He came in love and he left in love. We came into this world called out of love. We returned to our God out of love. That's what the story is about. And we're to take the time to listen to the lessons that are read in scripture, listen to them, and to see how they attach to ourselves and what we perhaps have not understood. Just like I mentioned to you a couple minutes ago, Do you realize that so many people in Israel at that time did not even know who the Jesus was? And he was walking their streets, could have even passed them by. And what Jesus is telling us now is that I am in your life. And he's saying to us, please do not pass me by. 
Take time. Understand what meaningfulness is and understand how God is sharing his love and working with you in the here and the now. This celebration that we are having is not at all about what is past. It's about what is present. Because you and I are the ones who bear this message. And uh, when we bear this message, does it show in our behavior? Now, what happens during this particular season, and all of us know this, and I talk to you every year about this one same thing, would you realize that we get busy during this time? Would you realize that? And would you believe that M59 over there is like the 500-mile track? And sure, don't get in anybody's way there. Not unless you have a bigger truck. So we see this hustle and bustle. So the first thing the Lord would suggest to you, we got to calm this down a tad. And watch so that we don't allow ourselves to get too busy. And this is the beginning of the month already, so we can look at the calendar and we know about things that need to be done. And make sure that you schedule in there where you're taking time to breathe. Another simple thing, do any of you use a Christmas tree? Hold up your hands. Thank you, you all did very well. Show and tell time. This is what I suggest, is that with your family, you make a concerted effort to turn all the lights off. Sit with your family, and I'm not talking about hours, I'm talking about 10 minutes. And just let the beautiful things that you have done in your home, let that affect you. Take the time for it. Because this is the part, the gift that God has given us, to look deeper into his love and his way of life. He's given that to us. And it can be very helpful. And it helps us to tone down the inner noise that we might have during this time and the busyness that is there. That isn't too much to ask, is it? And we shut off the TV, the phones, and we just we take that 10 minutes. Different families have done different things. Sometimes they'll have a prayer they want to say. Sometimes they will be quiet. Sometimes they will just ask each other about the season and what they remember. Any of those things are important because in the quiet, in that beautiful surrounding, simple though it may be, like my tree is only about that big, but it still gives me a lot of joy and happiness is to take that time so that you realize that what you're experiencing is the presence of God. Because whenever we make the effort to do these loving things, God is always present there. The last thing I want to talk to you about is routine. You and I need a routine because we need a certain amount of order in our life. You can't always fly by the seat of your pants. Otherwise, you're going to end up with no pants. Isn't that true? All right. The issue is that we take a look at our routine, but what happens is that our routine often will askew our ability to be meaningful, meaningfully present to the situation. And we can let all kind of things go on because every morning you get up, you make lunches, and you do this. Just try to stop for a moment with your routine. And that's where you can begin to slow things down so that you don't let this season come by. And I've heard this over and over again. It's hard to believe it's Christmas time already. You hear that phrase? Well, one of the ways to help that slow down is to watch your routine and to be aware of meaningfulness, the little things that will happen during this time. Now, 
On the TV, they use this word magical, and I understand why they do, but that's not this season. This season is about miracles. Because you know what magic is? Magic is an illusion. This Christmas is not an illusion. It is a gift. And therefore, often what can happen during this time are special little miracles that are important for us personally, for our family, or for others. Do you understand the difference I'm talking about here? What you do with Disneyland, that's magical stuff. And that has its place. But this is much deeper, much more serious, because we're talking about the presence of God that brings about profound experiences and changes in our life because of the way in which God loves us. And our meaningfulness is important here because we want to open ourselves to his further coming into our lives and understanding this Advent in a deeper way. And of course, you know how this is done because I've been going over and over this by doing one loving act after another because that represents the whole life of Christ one loving act after a time be aware of this season be meaningful about what you do and allow God to work with you so that you experience that deeper understanding that helps you and I deal with a world that has many uncomfortable things in it remember what Matthew told us he told the disciples go out and baptize in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and remember I will be with you to the end of the time I'll be with you to the end of time I'm with you all the way one loving act after another